Hello, welcome to Windy Hill. It's uh, just a little after 6.30 uh, this morning. Uh, and uh, I'm out here in, in the, the squash patch, I guess is what you wanna call it. Uh, gonna just kinda check things out. We've got a lot to do today. Uh, um, I noticed uh, I've got some, some deer encroaching on the garden, so we're gonna get out here and, and mow a a uh, no-fly zone uh, for the deer and for the uh, uh, grasshoppers. I've noticed that also uh, in this area back here. Uh, I've noticed that if I mow it back, uh, oh, 25, 30 feet, and mow it really short, uh, the deer don't come up quite as close uh, and not as curious about the garden, so that helps. Uh, so we're gonna get that going. And it looks like we might get a little rain today, so I want to get that mowed before it rains. A lot, a lot of you may uh, may know some. Of, well, some of you do know. A lot of you don't know. Uh, I've been a market gardener for a little over a year, uh, and uh, back 2012, uh, I did quite a bit of market gardening uh, before my house burned. Uh, when my house burned, I, I went to work and worked for a company uh, here locally uh, for about five years uh, until this past uh, May, uh, when they gave me a choice. I could either, you know, uh, stop going to the market or not work there. Uh, so I had to make a choice uh, on what to do. It's kind of a difficult choice, uh, but at the same time. Uh, uh, kind of easy uh, so I left and uh, I now I farm full time uh, so uh, your support is uh, always uh, uh, a big help <laughs> keeping the lights on so to speak uh, but let's get started with the day uh, we'll, we'll uh, I'll give you a tour of the uh, of the squash and what's going on with it uh, the the uh, sprouts that are coming up in the propagation house over there and uh, then we'll get ready for the market this weekend because we have a lot to do let's get started there's a squash that I've already already planted the uh, uh, seed here and uh, I decided to uh, wait and do transplants I really just didn't like my drip tape and I had to order some more but I didn't want to waste uh, I didn't want to waste any more time so I got them planted in the greenhouse we got a little rain yesterday uh, and they've been getting a little water so we've got sprouts coming in here so they're gonna have a head start on all the other guys uh, coming in at this point so as soon as that uh, as soon as my new drip tape gets here we will uh, get most of this pulled up and replaced with the new stuff uh, and uh, I think it'll be it'll water a lot more evenly I just don't like the way it's watering now but uh, That's it. Right, so once the once the drip tape gets here and these other plants get uh, get ready to rock and roll, we'll get out here one morning. And probably I'm sure it's going to take me two days to plant it by myself, but uh, we'll get her done and uh, have some uh, winter squash and some uh, zucchini. Uh, about the August something, August, September. So, looking forward to it. So, it's raining now, uh, which is nice. Uh, I thought I'd come in the greenhouse, do a little maintenance. Uh, here we are, that's a couple thousand squash. Uh, be another, uh, better another week or two before I get it in the ground. Now we come over here to the uh, tomato jungle. I kind of uh, <clears throat> lost control of my pruning 
with other chores I have to do here on the farm. So, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to take uh, this opportunity to get in here and uh, do a little cleanup work. Uh, maybe get them back, uh, get them back in shape. Our bell peppers this year doing really nice. Uh, some of these plants are almost four feet tall. Uh, giving, putting off some really, really nice uh, bell peppers. Yeah, that's what they are. Uh, like this guy here. You know, that's a pretty good sized bell pepper. Uh, we're going to let some of them go uh, and, uh, and ripen, so I'll have some red ones. Uh, just in case a lot of you, a lot of you didn't know, uh, a bell pepper is actually red. Uh, it's just ripe when it's red, but we pick them when they're green. So, uh, just a little tidbit in case you didn't know. A little bit of romaine lettuce. Yes, even in Texas. In July. This is one of one of my favorites. Just a really pretty lettuce. Uh, it's a Salanova. Uh, Butterleaf, I think, is the name of it. I can't remember right off. So, so in my uh, last video or my last segment, uh, I was talking about trying to beat the rain. Well, we didn't beat the rain, and uh, and it cost me a day. And then I had uh, a close call with jury duty, uh, and uh, luckily I didn't get picked. But uh, you know, living with nature a lot of times is uh, is hard. Uh, but living out here in the country. Storm warning sirens, uh, things of that nature for storms. You know, if uh, here, I mean, if I come outside and uh, I hear thunder and it's dark, the cows are still in the field, uh, chickens are still clutter, cl cl cluttering, cluttering, whatever they do, talking, uh, birds are still singing. Uh, I'm doing all right. Uh, when you come outside and you hear the thunder and it's dark and there's not a cow in sight, not a chicken to be heard, not a bird making any noise, all you can hear is your heartbeat. It's time to check your will and look for the shelter. Same thing with uh, bugs and deer in your garden. You kind of just got a lot of learn. There's no way to, to beat them without spraying everything, and I'm not going to spray everything. Uh, so what I usually do is I, I cut a berm uh, about 50 feet wide, and I cut it down to nothing. Where there's nothing of value to the grasshoppers, uh, it's just hot, desolate, almost dirt, nothing. Eventually. Uh, another day or two there won't be a grasshopper out here they'll go away and uh, the deer will come check it out they'll notice there's nothing here so they won't even cross over anymore uh, and so that's kind of how I deal with it uh, and then as a plan B just in case the deer don't get the message I've got some signs up that say no deer allowed uh, if that doesn't work, then uh, I've mined this 50 foot area here with pressure release mines. Uh, and uh, if that doesn't work, on each of these poles, I'm going to mount 50 millimeter cannons. These are laser guided. Uh, they've also got. Uh, animal vision on them so they can tell what kind of animal it is no fire at will and that should just about do it 
because this garden is mine. This is how I make a living. And uh, I got to pay the light bill. So they can't eat it. Well, I hope everybody knows that the, in the last segment uh, where I was talking about the landmines and things like that. Yeah, I hope everybody knows I was kidding. Uh, don't want the ATF storming in here and uh, uh, thinking I do. But uh, sometimes when you've uh, looked out at your garden the night before and you see all that squash or you see all those watermelons that you're ready to pick, uh, you get up the next morning and they're all gone. Uh, one would like to do something like that. But uh, like I said, living, living with uh, nature and, and the animals and the bugs, uh, you learn to... Uh, you learn to adapt and, and to grow with them. Uh, I, when I got up this morning, the deer were out, in the, not in the garden, but out in the field, but they were on the other side of the field. Uh, so hopefully the, the little barn will work. Uh, I've still got a lot of work to do. Uh, today's Wednesday. Uh, tomorrow is uh, a big work day, getting, getting things ready. Uh, Friday is always hectic. Uh, so we're gonna get going here today before it gets too hot and get the rest of this uh, work done uh, hope to see everybody at the Keller farmers market this Saturday uh, 9 to 1 uh, be there I'll be there so surely you want to be there so uh, have a great week what's left of it uh, if you don't do anything else this week just make one happy memory and we'll see you there